I want my son to be a scientist. Say no more. <laughs> I like this. Give the face of the baby. All right, let's do photoelectric effect, this time part two. So what we're going to do is to go a little bit deeper and just remind ourselves photoelectric effect. You have photons hitting a metal surface. They eject photoelectrons. And remember that there is this thing called the threshold frequency below which nothing happens, but above which then everything goes fine like E equals HF. So the kinetic energy of these pho photoelectrons that are kicked off does go up. Also, don't forget uh, that the work function is actually the explanation for this. That's the energy sort of holding on to the electrons. So that's the energy you have to overcome in order to kick out these photoelectrons. Now we have an equation then from our data booklet, and it goes like this. It's E max equals, and it goes HF minus phi. Now I like to think of this as, I just watch very carefully, this right here is your maximum kinetic energy of your electrons. But if you think about it, this is an energy which is measured in you know, electron volts. But remember this equation right here, E equals HF, so that's also an energy which is measured in electron volts. And this phi right here, that's a work function, which is also an energy in electron volts. So what I'm just trying to say is you've got energy equals energy minus energy. This is the energy of the photons coming in, HF here. This is the energy of the uh, work function. And it, hopefully it makes sense that some of that energy got used, some of the, uh, the energy from the photons got used to overcome the work function. And the remaining energy, the difference there, that's what's given to your uh, electrons. So hopefully that makes some sense. We've got all our uh, values right here. So H is just Planck's constant. We've got the frequency of the incoming light. And phi is the work function. Now this is not something that's formally needed, but I think it's still really important is a stopping potential. Because this is, this is very uh, important within uh, photoelectric effect. So it's the idea that, okay, now you connect this in a circuit. So let's say you have this uh, potential difference right here, and it's variable. You can change the voltage, so to speak. You can change the potential difference here. And you change it such that something very special happens. When you have Vs, which is what we're going to call the stopping potential, what happens then? Well. Remember uh, that the real way that currents, uh, that circuits work is that the negative right here actually goes like this right here. So this right here will become a negative. And what's going to happen is this. You're going to be able to stop those electrons from reaching the other side. You're going to stop them. Why is that? You're going to make this sufficiently negative that this negative is going to repel these negatives. So that means you're going to be able to stop them. And that's because the electrons, they won't have enough kinetic energy in order to reach that side. Okay, so the electrons, they have a kinetic energy E max. Remember, we were just learning about that in the other equation. Um, and then, well, to stop them, you have to have an electric field created by this you know, variable source. It has to do work on an electron that's equal to that maximum energy. So do you remember the equation for the work done on a charged particle? This is from our data booklet, but it goes like this. W equals Q times delta VE. Now, what I want to do is just replace all the different letters. So W, the work done, remember, we just said it has to be equal to E max. Okay, so that means that I'm going to say then that E max, we'll just put it here. That will be equal to, because that's an energy, that's a work done, equals the charge. Okay, that's fine, that's a charge. And then this delta VE, that'll just be the stopping potential. That'll be Vs. So this is the importance that uh, if you ever you need to work with the stopping potential, you can solve for stopping potential by just doing E max over Q, whatever you need. But this is at least something I think that could be pretty useful. Remember that Q is the charge of the electron in coulombs, and Vs is the stopping potential measured in volts. Let's do an example. So here we have photons that are incident on a potassium surface. Remember potassium is... Uh, Okay. I mean, I don't think you really need to know that, but there we go. So it's a potassium surface, and we know that the work function for this, so that's really important. We know that this phi, for example, right here is this. So it's 2.3 electron volts. And the question is, what's the maximum wavelength of light that's needed to free an electron from the surface? Why are we talking about maximum wavelength? I thought we talked about how we have a threshold frequency. Well, yes, but frequency and wavelength are opposite. So remember the threshold frequency, that's the minimum frequency that will correspond to a maximum wavelength. Okay, so the energy of these photons then, if we're at that, right at that limit, the energy of the photons will be the same as the work function. It'll be exactly the same. Okay, so that means I can set then that the energy right here will be equal to this one right here. Okay, so that's really important to know. 
Now, we also have something else. Remember, we have that uh, E equals HF. So let's actually work on this one right here. So we also have E equals HF. Remember, that's the energy of the incoming photon. Uh, but I want things in wavelength, not frequency. So I've got to do this little conversion again. Remember that uh, V equals F lambda. And we're talking about light, so we'll make it C. And then finally, I end up with uh, that frequency then is just uh, C over lambda. And why do I do that? Because I take that and I put it into here. So that means then I end up with this equation here. I end up with E equals H times C over lambda. Now this is the maximum energy of our incoming photon. Okay, but remember though, remember that the energy though is equal to phi. So what does that mean? Well that means I can say then that uh, phi equals hc over lambda, and I'm looking for lambda, I want the wavelength, so that means I have that the wavelength then equals, well I'll just multiply this and divide this, so I have hc over phi. So let's just start working on this right here. Let's put in the numbers right here. So we have phi, so I'll just fill it all in here. So lambda equals h, well h is Planck's constant, so 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Okay, then I have c, that's the speed of light, so 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Then I have my phi, which is 2.3 electron volts. But remember what an electron volt is, ooh, I have to do something about that. I have to convert that to joules. So I'll say, whoops, and it's supposed to be 2.3. So well, how much is an electron volt? Remember, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Maybe I'll write that down just to remind you. This is 1 EV. So since we have 2.3 EV, there we go. So I'll just use my calculator to solve this, and away I go. So I'll do a nice fraction. And I'll say, okay, I need 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, and I'll multiply that by 3 times 10 to the 8. Divide that whole thing by 2.3 times uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And I end up with an answer of 5.40489 times 10 to the minus 7. Now I want this in nanometers. That's what we were told right here, nanometers. And so what will I do? That means I'll write this answer then as, let's see, lambda is, well, I move the decimal over by 2. And I'll also do uh, it to two significant figures, so that means I'll say it's going to be 540 then nanometers, so that'll be 10 to the minus 9. But there we go, we have our answer for lambda. That is the maximum wavelength, which corresponds to the minimum frequency, in order to have this photoelectric effect actually happen. Now we have photons that have a larger energy. Remember before they were at 2.3, well that was at least the... Um, work function was 2.3 electron volts. This time we have photons that have an energy of 2.8. That means they have a large enough energy where they will be able to kick off photoelectrons. And we're supposed to find the maximum speed of them. Well, I think in order to do this, it'll be a nice and simple here. We'll just first of all, let's find E max. Because remember, we have this equation from our data book. Remember it goes E max, that's the maximum kinetic energy of electrons equals hf, remember that's the energy of an incoming light, minus phi. And that's going to be the really important thing, is remembering that this piece right here, maybe I'll label it, this right here is the energy of the incoming light. Okay, well that then should make it a lot simpler, because then we can just say, okay, we have E max then, it's just going to be equal to, and I know this energy of the incoming photons, it's 2.8 electron volts. So I'll say, okay, 2.8 EV minus, now I have the work function, Remember, that was 2.3 EV. Well, 2.8 minus 2.3 is just 0 0.5. So that means I can say then that the maximum kinetic energy of these uh, electrons is going to be 0 0.5 electron volts. Now, I want to convert that, though, to joules. So I will do my little uh, conversion here. So EV, I know there's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules for 1 EV. That's going to cancel these guys out, and that means I have to then use my calculator to go 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 0.5. So I'll do that right now. Uh, minus 19 here times 0.5. Or I could have just said divided by 2. So I've got 8 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Okay, well now I know the maximum kinetic energy. Then what I want to know is we'll convert that to a speed. In other words, I just need to find V. And this shouldn't be too hard because I know the equation for kinetic energy. It's just half 
mv squared. Now if I want to solve for v, what do I do? Well, I move the 2 on the other side, and I divide by m, and I take the square root. And I'm going to call the kinetic energy, I'm going to call that e max. Okay, so that means then I'm going to have, well, maybe I'll just rewrite in a few steps. I'll say, therefore, e max equals uh, 1 half m, and remember, this is going to be the mass of an electron, so I'll say me times v squared. So this means v is going to be equal to Let's see, it's going to be 2 times E max, all that over Me, the mass of the electron. Oh, and I can't forget to do the square root. It'll technically be the plus or minus, but I just care about the positive. So let me just put in those numbers then. So 2 times my maximum kinetic energy in joules, which is good. So it's 10 to the minus 20. That's good here. What's the mass of the electron? You can actually look it up. It's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. That's in your data booklet. Take the square root, and away I go. So that means I'll take my trusted calculator. Last step here, I'll do the square root, uh, that's here, of this nice fraction. And I'll say 2 times, well, my answer that I just got, all that divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And I end up with an answer of uh, 419084. Well, since I'm only allowed two uh, significant figures, that means I'll say uh, V is approximately then equal to, I'll say 4.2, because I'll move that, and I'll say times one uh, times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this will be 4.2 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. And this is actually really fast, and this is a huge, huge speed, right? This is, uh, well, this is 419,000 meters per second. I couldn't resist. I want to do the conversion here to figure this out. I just converted this to here in meters per second, you know, to kilometers, then to minutes, then to an hour. So that means it's 1.5 million kilometers per hour. So yeah, pretty fast.